Hey everybody, welcome back to Dead Man Deezy's Kanji Study Sessions. We got 12 new vocabulary words from the JLPT N1 list today. Uh, head on down to the description if you don't know how these study sessions go. Uh, essentially, I'll be writing down new kanji I don't know yet and going over the meanings of kanji I already do know. Uh, I like to write things down. If you don't want to listen to me write things down a bunch of times, head on over to YouTube. Our first word of the day is... Itameru. Itameru is our new transitive verb for hurting or injuring something. I hurt somebody's leg. Itameru is our new transitive verb for to hurt or injure. From our kanji, from the word itai, our e adjective for hurting. Itameru is to hurt or to injure. New transitive verb for hurting or injuring something. Itameru, itameru. Nani nani o itameru. To hurt something. Itameru is to hurt or injure. Number two is kan wa. Kan wa is relief, mitigation, or relaxation. Our new noun with the radical, or sorry, for the kanji for loose or lax. Kan and wa on the right side for peace. So this is a relaxation towards peace or harmony, aka a mitigation or relaxation. Kan wa is a loosening that leads towards uh, peace or harmony. Kan wa this. Kan wa is a loosening that leads towards peace and harmony. Kan wa this is relief or relaxation. Kanwa this. Kanwa. Kanwa is loosening that leads towards harmony, aka relaxation. Kanwa is relaxation or mitigation. Kanwa this. Kanwa. Relaxation or mitigation. Number three is Hama Hokani Hin for a sea coast, a beach, or a seashore. If Suna or sand is on the front of this, you know it's a sandy beach in particular, but this just means any beach. Hama or Hin is our word for a sea coast or beach. Radicals in this kanji are water on the left side and a soldier or mercenary on the right side. So this is a um, Soldier standing by the water side is a seacoast beach or seashore. Hama Hokani Hin is a seacoast beach or seashore. Hama Hokani Hin. Hama or Hin is a beach or a seashore. Hama or Hin is a seashore or a beach. Sunahama is a sandy beach. Hama Hokani Hin. Sunahama no Hama is a seacoast beach or a seashore. Number four is kakeru, to run, to dash, or to advance, with our kanji for running or dashing, which we've already learned before. Kake. Well, this is our kanji for inspiration, with our horse on the left side and a district on the right. The horse district is always inspiring. Kakeru. Kakeru is to run, to dash, or to advance. And this one's going to have to be rote memorization, because I don't know how to get running or dashing from inspiration. The kanji itself means inspiration. Kakeru is to run, to dash, or advance. Kakeru is to run, dash, or advance. Kakeru is to run, dash, or advance with our horse district being particularly inspiring. Kakeru. Kakeru 
is to run dash or to advance with our kanji for inspire. Number five is sha jitsu. Sha on the left side for a duplicate or a copy, and jitsu on the right side for reality. So this is um, talking about the idea of realism, that is copying things as they really are. Realism or representing something accurately is sha jitsu. The way I'm going to think about this is since shashin is a photo, I'm going to think of realism as true to a real life photo. Shajitsu is true to real life or a copy of real life with realism. Shajitsu is realism or copying something accurately. Shajitsu is realism. Shajitsu. Number six is a race, a lace or lathe with resu. A resu is a race. We're just going to remember race for now, but try and remember that it can also stand for lace or a lathe, depending on context. Resu is a race. Oh, here, katakana, so it's a pretty easy one. Number seven is a dai hon. Dai on the left side for a pedestal and hon on the right side for a book. This is literally a pedestal book, but it's the book that you read when on stage is the pedestal. Dai hon is a script or a scenario. Dai hon is a script or scenario. Dai hon is a script or scenario. Dai hon this a book of what's on stage. Daihon is a script or scenario. Number eight is Shin So. Shin on the left side for deep and So on the right side, kind of for an altitudinal level. So this is a deep altitudinal level, aka a depth or a deep level. Shin So, literally translated a deep altitude. Shin So. Shinso is a deep level or a depth. A shinso this. Shinso is a depth. Shinso is a depth. Shinso is a depth. So is a depth. Number nine is an all hiragana word with takumashi, our new e adjective for something burly, strong, or robust. Takumashi. Takai taku. Takumashi. Takumashi. So it's going to have to be rote memorization since we're not doing a kanji with it. Takumashi is burly, strong, or robust in all hiragana. Takumashi is burly, strong, or robust. Taku. Takumashi. Burly, strong, or robust. Takumashi. I'm just saying it a lot because it's got to be rote memorization. I don't know how else to remember that, at least for right now. This is why you need to study things in context, right? Because then if you give it a little bit of... その takumashi yotoko. It's like that burly strong guy. Now it, now I know it's like has to do with guys and men and muscles and you know this is why context is important. Number ten is shimi komu. Shimi on the left side for being dyed or being painted, and komu on the right side kind of for being packed into or crowded with. So this is being crowded or packed with paint to the point where it is soaked into it or permeated or per penetrated. Shimi komu is literally translated to um, die deep into kind of or to die with die in a crowding sense shimi komu is to soak in or penetrate shimi komu 
to die into crowding. Shimi komu. Shimi komu. It's to be dyed, soaked into, or permeated. Shimi komu. Uh, here's an example. Eto, ame wa fuku ni shimi konda. Ame, rain, wa fuku ni to the clothes, shimi konda. Rain has penetrated my clothes. Ame wa fuku ni shimi konda. Fuku ni shimi komu. Shimi komu. To penetrate, dye, or soak into. Shimi komu. To penetrate, soak into, or thoroughly permeate. Number 11 is ki soul. Ki on the left side for returning back home and soul on the right side for a nest. So this is returning to the nest. Literally translated, it is the noun for a homing instinct or a bird's homing used without the word instinct. Ki soul is one's returning home or to the nest, I should say, instinct. The returning to the nest instinct is ki soul or homing. Kisol is the instinct for returning home or to the nest. Kisol is one's homing instinct. Kisol is a homing instinct or homing. Not sure if you could use this same word when referring to like a missile that's homing in. Since this is specifically key soul, returning to a nest or a home. Key soul is a homing instinct, as in for birds. And finally, number 12 is ayabumu. From ayauku no aya. Aya is danger, so ayabumu is our new intransitive verb for fearing, doubting, or being anxious about something. Ayabumu is to fear, doubt, or be anxious. Ayabumu desu. Ayabumu. It's to fear. Or be anxious about. Ayabumu. Ayabumu is to fear or be anxious about. Ayabumu this. Let's go back to the top, make sure we memorize, well, not memorize, but put some good pins in our brain where all these memorizations are eventually going to go. We really only had one new kanji over today, but we've learned it before with hama, sunahama no hama, for a beach or a seacoast. Um, but other than that, pretty much just kanji we already know. Make sure you're making flashcards of these bad boys and immersing yourself in Japanese to get the full, uh, full learning experience of words. Our first word of the day was to hurt or to injure on a transitive verb, itameru. Itameru from the kanji for itai, or something that hurts. Itameru is to hurt or to injure something. Relief, mitigation, or relaxation is kanwa. Kan on the left side for a loosening or slacking. And wa on the right side for harmony. A loosening towards harmony is a re relaxation or mitigation with kang wa. A seacoast beach or a seashore is a hama with the soldier standing next to the water. Hama is a seashore or beach. To run, to dash, or to advance is kakeru, our new transitive verb, I think. Transitive, hold on a second. Intransitive verb, kakeru, to run, right. It, you're not running something. You, this is our intransitive verb, to run, kakeru, with our kanji, with the horse's district, meaning to inspire, kakeru, is to run, dash, or advance. Realism, or representing something accurately, is shajitsu. Sha on the left side for a copy, or duplicate, and jitsu on the right side of reality. Shajitsu is a copy of reality, aka realism. Lace, a wraith, a lathe, a lace, or a race is a resu. Resu, all in katakana. A script or a scenario is the book for the pedestal or stage, a daihon. 
Dai on the left side for a pedestal, and Hon on the right side for a book. The book of the stage is the script. The A depths or a deep level is Shin Soul. Shin on the left side for deep, and Soul on the right side for a level or altitude. Shin Soul is a deep altitude. Uh, burly, strong, or robust is Takumashi. Ta. Mashi, our new E adjective for burly and strong. To soak into or permeate is shimi komu. Shimi on the left side for dying or soaking into. And komu on the right side for to be crowded or packed with. It's crowded or packed with dying, aka it has been permeated. Shimi komu. Homing as an instinct is ki soul. Ki on the left side for to return, aka home, and soul on the right side. This time, not for altitude, but for a nest. So ki soul is our instinct for returning home to the nest. And finally, to fear, to doubt, or to be anxious about something with our uh, kanji from ayauku. To be dangerous, ayauku. Chotto matte. I think I have that right. Dangerous, risky, hazardous, right? Our E adjective, ayaui. This is ayabumu, to fear or to doubt about. Our new intransitive verb using the kanji for fear and doubt, ayabumu. Is to fear, doubt, or be anxious about. Let's go back to that. Yeah, and that's all our kanji for today. Thanks for watching. Uh, I will be back tomorrow with 12 new ones. We are under our 600 word limit which means we got less than like five months till we're done with all this stuff probably more like two months let's see what's five five ninety how much is left today five ninety three divided by twelve is how many more days five ninety three divided by twelve yes less than fifty days so in two months in um August at the end of September we should be done with this thing so uh, yeah keep, keep hanging in there and we will uh, see you probably tomorrow for some new kanji thanks for watching domo